Hey guys, and here we are back with another one. And as promised, here we are back with the Xiaomi notebooks. And in this particular case, hopefully I can answer two questions that we get a lot here. One of which is, is the MX150 from Nvidia, which is included on these three laptops enough for gaming? And hopefully we can get that answer in a few moments. And the other question is, which laptop should I get if I want some office productivity and gaming? Now we already seen in past videos which I will leave a link down below for everything that we have tested Akintosh video editing and so on so forth uh, what we have seen is that for video editing obviously the i7 models both the 13 inch model and the 15 inch model will have the edge and will perform a lot better than the uh, i5 model but in terms of gaming guys this reminds me a video that I made a few years ago regarding an i3 i5 and i7 with the same GPU uh, where we got almost the same results and in here for those of you that don't want to wait for some numbers regarding the first question in terms of the MX150 what I can say is that if you are willing to uh, use your games in the medium presets and then in all the games boosting up to high and in uh, later games or more recent games making it to lower settings then you will be more than fine with the MX150 which actually I was surprised once I got my hands a few months ago on these machines regarding playing games on this graphics card. Now in terms of the second question guys honestly if you are looking just for something to have office productivity and then sometimes some gaming then I would say that if you are okay with this type of constraint and we know that in terms of gaming we will not be able to use maximum settings on the newest games triple a games but in my opinion in terms of office productivity and gaming to get the best value of the machine i would say that the best balance is in the i5 because in terms of gaming as you will have the chance to see in just a few moments we will have more or less the same results as we would on the i7 CPU. And that being said, moving on to some tests so that you guys can see some numbers. First of all, as you guys know, I'm not a gamer, so don't expect the latest games available uh, in the market, but I will use three of my favorite games that you guys will be able to find some information on the web about those games with other GPUs, and then you will be able to compare the results on this GPU along with other known GPUs. And at the end of the day, you will be able to make your own choice with some data. That being said, let's go straight for it, starting with Grid Auto Sport. Guys, I'll show you a few images on screen. What I did besides playing with the game, I did use a bit more scientific test, which is the included benchmark so that I could get uh, exactly the same scenes and so on and so forth. And testing out with uh, the i5 and i7 model, I will show you guys on screen some numbers. In terms of average frames per second, on the i5 model I was getting roughly 59 uh, frames per second and on the i7 I was getting 64 frames per second. I will also include the maximum and minimum frames per second but I will not read them so you guys uh, just make a pause right over there and you will be able to see some differences. Now moving to the same game at uh, medium preset still at 1080 resolution uh, with the i5 I was able to get 79 frames per second and with the i7 an average of 84 frames per second. So in terms of the first game we can see that there is a little difference between the two CPUs and this you will find across all the results that we will check just in a few moments but in my opinion it's negligible. Now if you are a hardcore gamer then you would say hey one frame per second is one frame per second but if you are one hardcore gamer then probably you are not looking at this kind of device. Now moving on to Shadows of Mordor I did the exact same procedure using the internal benchmark. I did three tests right over here one of which was at 1080 with the high preset i5 was able to get a 29 average score in terms of frames per second and then on the i7 30 frames per second of average as you guys can see once again the difference is minimal then moving to the medium preset at 1080 uh, in terms of the i5 we've got 32 frames per second on the i7 33 frames per second so once again a small difference right over there and then on the lowest preset uh, what we saw was an increase on the i5 CPU to 42 frames per second on average and for the i7 45 
frames per second. Now I also played a little bit uh, like I did with every single game and in here which is a game that I enjoy to play with my kid, the oldest one, uh, what I could see is that I could get roughly 30 frames per second uh, playing the game and in more intensive scenes what we can get is uh, a lower to 20 to 25 frames per second while using the medium graphics at 1080. And of course, this is not the optimal experience. I would prefer to lower the graphics a little bit more uh, and have a better frames per second. But what I can say is that in general, my experience was not bad. Honestly, I had one or two freezes uh, across all games, I can't recall right now, but the overall experience is more than acceptable for this kind of device and this kind of game at the level that we are playing in terms of graphics and in terms of presets. Now moving on to the last game that I tested, which was Metro Last Light. And guys, right on screen, I'll show you the same test in using the uh, included benchmark. What I got was with high preset, i5 got 27 frames per second on average, while the i7 got 29 frames per second. Here we are talking once again at 1080. And then on medium preset, we got the i5 average frames per second of 40, the i7 43. And then lastly, on the low preset at 1080, once again, i5 got 43 frames per second, while the i7 got 49 frames per second. Now, as you can see, or as you did saw, biggest difference was on the minimum frames per second and on the maximum frames per second, which is something that we need to read. And usually I read it like this, the maximum is less important than the minimum. Uh, but usually both of these results is a peak in just one frame or two that it will reach 100 frames per second for two seconds but that doesn't matter too much to me or it will lower to uh, 15 or 20 frames per second which will be for a few frames and that will not matter much but it will matter more the low than the higher because on the low we will notice uh, some frame dropping and on the higher no nonetheless in terms of average frames per second as you guys had the chance to see it was more than acceptable now i also played a little bit with this uh, game and as you guys can see i did have a pleasant experience roughly on the 30 frames per second which is not the best as i said but it is acceptable i can play a game like this without any issues at all so in conclusion guys what i can say is that like i said in the intro in some of the mx150 it is one of those gpus that i can say hey guys yes if you are looking for a machine for uh, your office productivity and at the end of the day you want to play some casual gaming and you are not a hardcore gaming then this will be more than fine and don't worry about the i7 just get the i5 which is cheap you will save some money and you will have the same kinds of experience if you're still looking for other answers don't forget to check the link down below with all the videos that we have produced about these laptops which in terms of build quality in terms of price and performance they are in my opinion once again a great value and that being said my name is Roberto George hope that you guys enjoyed the video and as always I'll see you on the next one